Oh, good morning, Shiloh. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, what I want to do this morning is I want to speak into uh, the coming season, Rosh Hashanah, year 5784. Um, we're less than three weeks away from Rosh Hashanah. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about Rosh Hashanah here in a second. But just before I get into the... God's given me three words so far. Um, we may get through all of them, we may not. We'll see how they unpack. But I want to make sure I mention something to you all. Um, next month, I think it's the 13th and 14th of September, Patricia is doing a free webinar. So anywhere you are in the world, you can sign up for this. It's completely free. There it is. Um, and she's also going to be unpacking what she's hearing from God for this coming new year on the Hebrew calendar for year 5784. You can go to patriciaking.com or patriciakingministries.com to register for that. Again, it's free, but you do need to register so that then Shelly can get you the link to the private YouTube channel that we do these things on, the free webinars on, um, and that way we can see comments and interact with you online as well. But um, it's a really, really, really epic and historic season, and you're going to find out this morning, even from the words that I'm going to share with you, God wants to use you in some notable and remarkable ways in this coming season. Um, so don't miss that opportunity. Go to patriciaking.com or patriciakingministries.com and sign up for that. Um, it's going to be powerful. She always, you know, Patricia serves in the office of prophet and uh, always is receiving from the Lord and always getting instructions and keys. And what I love about what she does is she really, she not only hears, but she disciples in what she hears. She activates in what she hears. She mentors in what she hears. So you won't want to miss that. All right. So let's talk about Rosh Hashanah for a second. Rosh Hashanah, as I'm sure you all know, is the Jewish New Year. We're coming into year 5784. I was at an event and was talking with somebody uh, about this, and they said, you know, I don't, I don't understand why New Testament Christians pay attention to things like the Hebrew calendar, the Hebrew festivals. I said, oh, that's actually a really great question, because here's why we do. Um, we do not because we have to keep the, the festivals or keep the laws or observe these things to get something from God we don't have. But it's for two reasons, I believe. Everything is fulfilled in Jesus Christ. So when we are celebrating these things, we're celebrating what we do have, not what we can have. It's not a religious requirement. For me, it's a celebration of all that Jesus has fulfilled the requirements of on our behalf. The second reason, though, that I think the, the things like Rosh Hashanah are so important is because we need to remember we are grafted in to Israel. Replacement theology is a lie from the pit of hell. Period. I don't, I don't want to get into a theological debate about that. Just talk to the Apostle Paul about it when you get to heaven. He'll tell you, I covered it very clearly in my epistles. We are grafted into this. Now, this doesn't mean we become Jews. It means we get grafted into being the apple of God's eye. God actually says that he is using us to make the Jews jealous because we walk in the fullness of all that we have so that they'll realize Jesus is Messiah. So because of that, I am not saying we ignore the Gregorian calendar. I don't know if you've noticed. God doesn't ignore the Gregorian calendar. God is eternal. God is from the, the place that is beyond space and time. He created space and time. He invades space and time. He speaks through space and time. If he can speak to us through, you know, uh, an almond branch, like with Jeremiah, he can speak to us through a calendar, a season, or a festival. It's not that any of those things have magical qualities. It's that God is always speaking, and however we give him our attention, he will take advantage of it. Whenever we act like Moses and say, oh, I'm going to turn aside from the path that I've been on and give God my attention, like in Exodus 3, it's not that he then goes, oh, good, they're paying attention, I'll speak nearly so much, I think, as we give him our attention and realize he's been speaking all along. He's been saying, Dustin, 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 just, just give me a minute. Oh, I miss you, Dustin. I love you, Dustin. Oh, I'm going to hug on you, Dustin. I'm going to love on you, Dustin, until you turn your attention to me so I can tell you all the great things I have for you, how much I love you. He's always speaking. And I think one of the reasons Rosh Hashanah has been such a blessed time of communication for us 
is because he's gotten our attention with it in the past, so we seek him now, just like we do at the change of the Gregorian calendar. So I love Rosh Hashanah. I love the shifting of seasons. I love the son of Issachar anointing that we move in as a ministry, discerning the times. So I'm often seeking God when you sense the, 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 the season's changing, the year is changing, the time is changing, when there's markers like Rosh Hashanah or our new year. But this is what's interesting to me. The first word I'm going to share with you, God gave me a couple weeks ago. And the reason I'm pointing that out is I want to be honest. I was not seeking him yet for words for 5784. I think God is chomping at the bit to get us moving, to get us going, to get our attention, to speak to us and to encourage us and to equip us and to empower us for this coming season. So let me start right off with all three of these words, if we get to them all, what I want your main takeaway to be from this is, as you know, Pastor Francisco um, shared this, and then the vision he had ties right into this first word, by the way, so we'll be unpacking it. But he said 5784 is the year of the open door, and I've heard some great things on this already about God is opening doors of opportunity for us, which he is. God is opening the doors of heaven to pour out blessings and provision in this season, which he is. Absolutely. How many of you know there's always layers of revelation? And there's layers of truth. That doesn't mean there's part truth, half truth. It means God is always showing more of his truth and what is true. This is what he's put on my heart in regards to the year of the open door that we're going to unpack. You are the door God wants to open in this coming year. And he wants to flood heaven into you and through you into this earth like never before. Now he'll be doing things like opening doors of opportunity for you to let heaven flow through you into those places and into those people. He'll be opening the windows and doors of heaven to flow blessings and revelation and provision into you so you can be that open door. It's all a yes and amen in Christ Jesus. But here's the first word. I was sitting actually in another meeting up in um, Flagstaff, Arizona, listening to an, one of the other speakers' session, and he was awesome. He did, he did an amazing job. He was a fascinating guy and an incredible speaker. He was, the, uh, he was a Top Gun fighter pilot, and then he became the number one aerial dogfight instructor for the Top Gun school for years. And then he, after he retired from that, he got into business consulting, and he really teaches businesses how to hear from God to see their businesses improve. He's a fascinating guy, great guy, really enjoyed his session, and I was really, really into, into what he was sharing. So I'm saying that to say I was really paying attention to him, and all of a sudden, God did this. Like my, my niece sometimes comes up to me and does this. I gotta tell you something. She says, I got to tell you something. Uncle Rob, I got to tell you something. And she grabs my face and turns my face to her. We had a family day yesterday. And we were all swimming in the pool together. And at one point, she came up to me. And I was, I was tired because they don't think of me as Uncle Rob. They think of me as Jungle Jim Rob. And they just are climbing all over me all the time. And there's this part of me that's like, kiddos, I'm getting close to 60. Can we just slow it down? And then I think, no, no, speed it up. I am eternally young and strong, and I am here for you. But grab my face. Uncle Rob, I got to tell you something. Now, the truth with her is she's usually ratting out her brother or sister. <laughs> but, but I love how she does that. And it was like God in the middle of Ed's amazing session. It was like he grabbed my face. Was, I got to tell you something. And all of a sudden, I heard him say this. A triple vision anointing is being released from heaven into the earth in 5784. Now, as someone, and again, you guys know, I'm just real with you, and I'm very real with God. And you know it's a word from God, and my first thought is awesome. My second thought was, as somebody who's worn glasses since the age of two, what the heck is a triple vision anointing? Because I had to get corrective lens wear for a double vision anointing when I was two and a half years old. And all of a sudden, the Lord starts unpacking this. And he said, in this season, he wants to ramp up vision. And there's three aspects to this triple vision anointing that he is releasing. And you're going to hear that one of them is exactly what Pastor Francisco shared with us through his vision. The first aspect of this triple vision anointing is you will clearly see the issues of the day 
and the true causes that are behind them. You're going to clearly see the issues, the challenges, the trials, the tribulations, and you think, oh, I don't need any help with that. I see them already. But here's one of the cool things. You're going to clearly see what is actually behind them. You're going to clearly see the powers and principalities behind them. You're going to clearly see what, what is causing them as opposed to who is causing them, right? So, and I tell you what, as we come into this election season, it's more important than ever. I'm not just, I'm not talking politics here. I'm talking kingdom solutions. Because it's not about politics. It's not about this party or that party. It's about seeing our nation, our people, and every one of the spheres of influence to returning to knowing God, revering God, seeking God's wisdom, moving in God's wisdom, so we can be a blessed, not just a blessed nation, but we can bless others. And we really need to get this, Robert. I'm talking to me as much as anybody. When those headlines come across our phones, when that news app opens up and we see the article and our least favorite politician is creating another wicked policy or that false prophet lying media voice is declaring so. It's not them. It's the powers and principalities behind them. We're here to fight for our least favorite politicians. Not their policies, but for them. Because Jesus died on the cross for them. And we really are going to begin to get, we war not against flesh and blood. And let's get real. Sometimes, in a wicked way, it feels good to war against flesh and blood. Make them the problem, because then I can see how, oh, if they'll just get cast down, if they'll just get kicked out, if there just be some smiting that started to happen. Am I the only one that ever goes there? <laughs> and then the Lord is always so kind to touch me on the shoulders, like, when does the recompense of the wicked happen? God! <laughs> how about praying some mercy, son? Oh, that is way more effective. He still reminds me regularly, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And my flesh wants to say, they know exactly what they're doing. <laughs> they're writing policy about it. And I have to go, wait, wait, wait. But you know what? They know not what they do. Whether they're consciously or unconsciously in league with darkness, they know not what they do. They've been trapped, they've been tempted, they've been lied to, they've been lured, they've stepped into it. We need to have mercy and compassion and kindness to fight for them. Because I know we think, oh, everybody says that. But we say it because it's true. That Saul may become our next Paul. And we've got to remember that. Will we fight for them the way Jesus fought for me? The God who showed up and said to me, a wicked, selfish, arrogant, hateful, hurtful man, I refuse not to love you. He didn't lead, read me a laundry list of all the things I had done consciously, by the way. He didn't say, you knew exactly what you were doing, and I'm here to smite thee. Because in about 21 years, you're going to be asking for some smiting, and you're not going to understand that means you too. We are going to clearly see the issues of the day and clearly see what is behind them, part one. Because we are going to move in so much mercy, so much grace, so much kindness, so much compassion. And one of the other things you're going to hear is so much power and so much authority because that's the position where we're saying, I don't want a war against flesh and blood. I want a war for them. My weapons are not mighty in me. I've proven that again and again and again. But they are mighty in God for the pulling down, not of my least favorite politician, not of my least favorite media person, not of my least favorite school administrator, but for the pulling down of the strongholds of the enemy. And we're going to see it, and we're going to do it. So aspect number one, we will clearly see the issues of the day and the true causes that are behind them. Discernment. We're increasing in discernment. The second aspect of this triple vision anointing, you will clearly see the solutions, which Pastor Francisco talked about, and how to partner with God to bring them about. So the first aspect of the triple vision anointing is ramping up discernment. The second aspect of the triple vision anointing is he's ramping up wisdom. So I not only see the issues and what's behind them, but I clearly see the solution and how to partner with God to get her done. Because we're here to get her done. And I am telling you, there is going to be a simple button anointing on all of this. 
Part of what's going to happen with this clear vision is we're not only going to clearly see the issues and what behind them, we're not only going to clearly see the solution and how to partner with God in them, but we're going to clearly see that, oh, you mean I can sit in my prayer chair and deal with this? That's simple. I'm getting ahead of myself to another word. Just a second. So triple vision anointing. We talked about aspect one and aspect two. When we clearly see the issues of the day and what's behind them, aspect one, and we clearly see the solutions and how to partner with God to bring them about, aspect two, the third vision part of the triple vision anointing will kick in. As we do this, others will clearly see God and the reality of his, wisdom, his, his, his kingdom in us, on us, and through us. This triple vision anointing is a huge part of God's billion plus soul harvest strategy because many of those billions are not coming to a church meeting as wonderful as they are. I'd like to drag them all here so they can get saved, encouraged, equipped, discipled. I would like to see every one of them go to a revival meeting, but they're not gonna, many of these people won't go to church, won't go to revival meetings. And if you've spent any time out on the streets, some of them don't want prayer. But I tell you what, they're going to start clearly seeing the reality of his God and his kingdom in you, on you, and through you. And they're going to be wondering, how did you see that so clearly? How, how did you see that solution? They're going to, and I'm telling you, one of the things that he really put on my heart is some of the hardest cases, hardest hearts, most blocked off minds, stiffest necks in our families and in our workplaces are gonna be the ones who see this. We are living epistles, read of all men, and this triple vision anointing is gonna help you be read as one who clearly sees what things are going on. What, why are you fighting for that person as opposed to against them? Well, I can clearly see that they're not the problem. It's this, this, and this, and I wanna see them set free. Would you fight for me that way? Absolutely, my Jesus did and I will too. I am telling you, this third aspect of others will clearly see God and his kingdom in you, on you, and through you as the living epistle that you are meant to be, you're gonna start reaching people that you kind of almost gave up on because preaching with them, kind of, you know, even in love, sharing truth with them, just shut down, shut. this encouraged me so much. I have members of my family who even in a, in a nicest way, I have one of my older nephews who says, Unc, I love you, but I don't hear any more of that God nonsense. Like, okay, but you're going to see it. <laughs> you're going to clearly see it. <laughs> and you're going to clearly see that he's real. And you're going to clearly see that he loves you. And he's going to clearly see that his kingdom is all about what he wants to give you and do for you. Oh, this is awesome. It's going to be the same for you with your family and in your workplace. This is Isaiah 60, verse 2. I had one of those moments when I was going through this with God where I was like, oh. You guys know I joke about having the duh anointing. God makes things simple. I had one of those duh moments. I was like, oh, duh. This is why for a year you've been telling me we're in an Isaiah 60 opportunity, not just season, but opportunity. And the key is verse 2, to behold the darkness, to behold the deep darkness, not ignore it, not be discouraged by it, not be angry, don't give in to despair, but to behold it. That's, that's, that's aspect one, clearly seeing the issue and what's behind it. And then allow the kingdom of God to arise in you. Let the glory of the Lord appear upon you. This is aspect number two. I mean, all I have to do is choose to let righteousness, joy, and peace arise in me instead of irritation, frustration, and despair. Yeah, it's that simple. And then when I do, the, 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 the glory of God will appear upon me. The fullness of his goodness, not only his presence will be discerned, but his wisdom is part of his goodness, right? His power is part of his goodness, right? His authority is part of his goodness, right? We move in all of that. When we simply allow the kingdom of God as opposed to the kingdom of the flesh to arise in us, now all of a sudden, all those things that are the simple solutions, oh, I can let his authority arise in me. Let his wisdom and authority. I mean, God, all of a sudden I know if I declare this scripture to this situation, things have to change because your word never. Oh. And then what does it say after that? Nations will come to you like kings to the brightness of your rising. Like, oh, that's aspect number three. God, you're so good at this. 
You've been talking to me. You've been getting me ready for a year to see this is what you're releasing and anointing for us to walk in this triple vision. Daniel walked in this. I'm rereading the book of Daniel over and over and over again right now. It's a really, I think, key and strategic book for this season, especially the season we're coming into. And I'm reading through it now, and it's like, oh, this is what Daniel had, a triple vision anointing. He clearly saw the issue and what was behind it. Yeah, I'm here to um, let you know that because none of the, the witch doctors and occultists and wizards and witches could figure out uh, Nebuchadnezzar's dream, he said, we got to kill all the wise men. You've been a great kid, so I'm here to tell you, well, I'm here to kill you and all your friends. <laughs> what does Daniel say? Don't kill anybody. Don't, don't kill the occult priests. My God is a solution for this. This cut me to the quick in the best possible way because I'm thinking Robert's response would be, well, you don't want to kill me and my friends because we're going to partner with God to bring you the solution. But a good first step would be to cut the head off of every one of those occultic priests because you've partnered with darkness. Shame on you. You've been part of the problem, and it's time for some smiting, baby. That's not the kingdom solution. The kingdom solution is my God wants everybody to see he's real. My God wants everybody to come into a radical saving knowledge of who he is. Don't kill anybody. I'm going to go meet with my God. He is a solution for you. I see, I see the real solution here. I see the real problem. It's not Nebuchadnezzar. It's not his policies. It's not even those occultic priests. It's that they don't see God is real. And he's with us. And he cares, and he can solve anything. I know my God has wisdom for this. And then what happens? He moves in aspect one, aspect two, and then aspect three happens. Nebuchadnezzar is now decreeing the God of Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, including uh, chapter three now. He's the one real God, and we all must worship him. This is the triple vision anointing, and you're going to receive it. I shared this with uh, a group online, a mentoring group that I have. And one of the questions they had, this is super exciting. This is great. I'm excited about this. But how, how, how do you get this? I was like, oh, great question. Like with any prophetic word, you receive it by faith. And you activate it by faith. And you decree it and you declare it. So when we wrap up here, I'm going to pray these things over you. And then you're going to receive them by faith. And any inkling like i'm at a point right now with this if i like i was driving back late last night from scottsdale and i had this sense to go a different route than usual because sometimes there's construction and sometimes part and i i don't know if i was right or not but i'm in my jeep going praise you god for the triple vision anointing thank you god for showing me solutions and giving me wisdom when i need it I'm thanking him for all, but that's, that's how I, what I do with prophetic words is I receive them by faith, I decree them, I pray through them. When I feel any inkling of them happening, I give him praise, and we establish and build the realm. All right, so let's go to word number two. A prayer revival will come forth that awakens believers to the authority they have to settle things in the spirit through prayer declaration and decrees there is a prayer revival that is about to break out we saw this past year or so we saw an amazing worship revival right where people were lingering in worship for hours and hours and hours and the presence came and people were impacted i am telling you there's a prayer revival coming i don't know if it's going to be big groups but i i guarantee this this i've seen it's coming to every individual believer in their prayer chair, in their prayer drive, in their prayer times. A revelation of the authority we have to sort and settle things in the spirit through th something as simple as prayer, declarations, and decrees is coming. There is a revival of prayer that is going to break out because it's going to be actually part of the triple vision anointing. It's going to be part of the solutions that we see. Oh, I have this scripture. I have this double-edged sword of the scripture. I have this sword of the spirit in the scripture, and I am going to cut down and hack down every single thing of the enemy with it as I declare it in faith. A prayer revival will come forth that awakens believers 
believers to the authority they have to settle things in the spirit through prayer, declaration, and decrees. This will be a passionate movement of faith-filled, effective prayer. Now, I realize I'm talking to a house and I'm talking to a global church that already understands this, but do you get that we're birthing something? I love Shiloh prayer in the morning. They've been, for more than a year, they've been birthing this exact thing. In, in worship, the presence come. They stand in the presence and then begin decreeing, decreeing and declaring what they hear on God's heart, and we see shifts happen. This is going to break out through the body of Christ in 5784, and there will be a passionate movement of faith-filled, effective prayer. The Lord is about to reinvigorate his people in the power and authority of prayer. And we've all been there. This is not a judgment. This is an observation where we're going through something. We've tried everything. And we say, or someone we know says something like, well, I guess all I can do is pray. And I want to honor those people because they're actually believing, okay, I've tried everything. I'm going to go back into prayer. That's not a lack of faith. That's simply battle weariness from the situation i can relate but i am telling you what is going to happen is there's going to be this sense of i can't wait to pray i can't wait to deal with it. i know when i stand in my authority and i make this decree something must happen and when we don't see it it doesn't budge us we know i'm going to pray it again and again and again because the word of god never returns void but accomplishes all that I, have, that I send it forth to do. This is a renewed revelation of James 5.16, which, as you all know, says, the effective and fervent prayer of a righteous one avails much. Now, check this out. Effective and fervent is the word energeo. It's the same word the apostle Paul uses when he talks about the gift of the working of miracles. And energeo has two meanings. And it, one is to be active and one is to be mighty. And it's a kingdom principle that whatever we steward grows, right? Energeo is all about that. When we understand the power of prayer, we will pray again and again. We will be active in prayer. What does that do? It makes us mighty in prayer. It's just like the way to grow mighty in the working of miracles is to be active in the working of miracles. We've been sewing into miracle online miracle and healing services for a couple years now, and we've seen some things here and there. We're starting to see miracles regularly break out online now. Why? Because we've been active in our faith to do miracle online services with different streaming groups and different churches all over the world for a couple years now. We're now regularly getting reports of people being healed online even after we've gone live and they're watching those things. We're gonna get the same revelation with this in prayer. Those eight decrees to heal the nation we have, I tell you, in this season, when I'm in my prayer chair and I'm praying those, I'm not just, oh Lord, I, I hope you do this. I am in governmental, apostolic authority of fervent, effective prayer, knowing this nation must shift. Uh, we will, okay, yeah. We've sent those out to thousands and thousands of people all over the world. We're um, going to ramp that back up. I believe we're restarting Firewall USA too, right? Okay. Yep. So we'll post those on Facebook for you. If by chance you missed that and you want them, email me, robert at roberthodgkin.com. We'll get them to you. But there is this uh, power of prayer, a revelation of the power of prayer that's coming forth according to James 5.16, and a revelation of the authority of prayer that will be the renewed realization of Jeremiah 1 verse 10 that's going to hit the body. And let me read that to you quickly here. Behold, I love that word lately. God is saying, let me highlight something to you. Let me help you see something that I've given you. Oh, I love behold. God is saying, behold this. You have this. Not only behold it, see it, but I think there's an aspect of like behold is to see but also grab hold of. Start moving in this. Oh, behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have appointed you this day over the nations and over the kingdoms to pluck up and to break down to destroy and to overthrow to build and to plant 
there is this realization and revelation coming to the body of Christ that when we let God highlight to us what he once declared into this situation, the second aspect of the triple vision anointing, we are going to know that we know that we know. No matter, do not say I am but a youth. Do not say, hey, I've been around so long and I've never seen this stuff work. Do not say anything other than knowing God is putting his words in your mouth so you speak them forth, you decree a thing, and it shall be established. Jeremiah 1, verse 10, is God highlighting to his body, you are my solution in the earth. You are my hand-picked warriors for this season, for every situation, and the weapon you wield is the two-edged sword of the Spirit. Send it forth and know it will pluck up and break down the things of the enemy. It will destroy and overthrow every power and principality of the enemy, and it will build and plant the things of the kingdom here on earth so everything must change. One last little thing I want to point out from uh, James 5.16 that I skipped. Notice how it says the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous one. Now, this isn't a religious requirement. This isn't about, oh, you better be righteous or it won't work. You are righteous. Jesus Christ has made you righteous. However, do you see in the context why there has been this war against radicals of righteousness and heroes of holiness? dismissing them as legalistic or religious or performance-based. That's not it at all. There's no performance or religion or legalism in choosing to live the righteous life Jesus has given us. There's nothing other than her this heroic aspect to choosing to live holy. We don't do it to get something from God we don't have. That's religion. That's legalism. That's performance. We do it to fully inhabit all he has given us, including effectiveness and authority in prayer. This is one of the reasons that, I don't like to call it extreme grace because God's grace is extreme, but the sort of sloppy grace or whatever you want to call it that, you know, hey, Jesus dealt with it all at the cross, which he did, by the way. So you can live however you want which unfortunately you can, but when you choose to live outside of the righteousness of Christ, you open the, the door to, to not know his blessings and to give place to the enemy. So it's not about religion to please God. It's about fully inhabiting. And part of fully inhabiting all that he's blessed us with is when we inhabit that place, we have so much power so much authority, so much effectiveness in prayer. We're going to shift things in this nation. We're going to shift things in this world. We're going to see darkness shattered. We're going to see the lies, lures, chaos, and confusion of the enemy shattered. We are going to be effective for the kingdom. So let me, let me wrap this one up and then really quickly get into a third word. But I, I started out by saying my goal for you today in hearing these three words for 5784 is if nothing else, I want you to walk out of here knowing that you are the door God wants to open in 5784. And there's a scripture for a couple years now God keeps taking me deeper and deeper and deeper into. It's become one of my favorite passages in the New Testament, and God has been showing me so much in it the last couple years. It's Matthew 16, and we know it well. I won't go into the whole thing, but to, to quickly uh, review it, it's when Jesus says, who does the world say that I am? And they say, well, this, this, and this, and Jesus ignores that, right? He's not ignoring them. He's mentoring them in how to ignore the report of the world, how to not give place to the report of the world how to not give place to what CNN and MSNBC and Fox News is saying. Like, okay, that's what they're reporting, that's what they're saying, not gonna give place to it. Not hard-hearted, not ignoring, not denying, just teaching you how not to give place to that. And then he says, hey, Simon, who do you say that I am? And Simon says, you are the Christ. And he says, well done, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And upon this rock, I shall build my church. Now, obviously, he means several things here. He means his church is built upon the revelation that he is the Messiah and the Christ. Absolutely Christianity 101. He also means you are now called Peter. You are one of my rocks that I will build part of my church upon. But I believe there's a whole nother layer here where he's saying when you learn to ignore and not give heed to the report of the world, 
You learn not to give place to the reactions of your flesh. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. But you listen to the word of my Father, and you move according to that. Then the gates of hell cannot prevail. And then he says, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound from heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will have been loosed from heaven. He's saying when you're willing to operate in the triple vision anointing, to clearly see the issues and what's behind them, see the solution and partner with me in them, and you understand the authority and power you have in prayer, and you declare the word of my father, not repeat or murmur and complain about the report of the world and not give place to the reactions of your flesh, the gates of hell cannot prevail because you are now my door of heaven into the earth. You are the door that God wants to open in 5784. And he wants to flow kingdom wisdom, kingdom revelation, kingdom insight, kingdom understanding, kingdom authority, kingdom power, kingdom word, kingdom miracles, kingdom light, kingdom love, kingdom life, kingdom joy, kingdom kindness, kingdom mercy, kingdom solutions, kingdom difference making. He wants to flow heaven through you into every sphere of influence, every place and to everyone you encounter. That's his plan for 5784, you. Now, let me quickly get into this third word because for those of you who catch this, those of you who by faith receive this, those of you who are willing to walk with Holy Spirit and be mentored and disciple in this, you know what that means? You're going to war in 5784. This was one of the other words God gave me. Spoils of war in 2024. But he gave it to me here. We could say the same thing for 5784, but I want to I wanna have prophetic integrity and say when God spoke it to me, I heard him say there will be spoils of war in 2024. But I do believe it's one of the shifts that's coming as we step into 5784. So if you're willing to move in, receive and move in, all that we're talking about, let's get real. The first thing I hear when he says there'll be spoils of war in this coming year, one of that mean, things means there's going to be war in this coming year. Now remember this. We've talked about this. I'm, the reason we talk about it so much is I need to be reminded of it. Seasons of warfare are not woe is me seasons. Seasons of warfare are seasons where God is blessing us with battles because it's a time to take territory from the enemy for the kingdom. And in our families, in our health, in our finances, in our cities, nations, and the world. Now, I'll, I'm going to be really blunt. I had a moment about a week ago where I was sitting in my, unfortunately, it was a little bit of a murmur and complain chair that day more than my prayer chair, but thankfully God got my attention. But this was my thought. Come on, God. Enough already. It was just one thing after another on every single front. And I heard myself say that out loud. And it was like Holy Spirit didn't even have to say anything. The way I see it now as I reflect back on it, it's like he just came and put his arm around me. Because immediately after saying, Come on already, enough, God. I immediately shifted and said, no, my declaration is enough, God. God, you are enough, and enough is enough on all these fronts. You have not called me to murmur and complain about these things. You have called me to partner with you to be a difference maker and solution bringer in all of it. God, I'm a little battle weary. Help me shake it off. And I actually stood up and started doing this. All right, God, I'm shaking off the battle weariness. I'm shaking off the battle fatigue. I'm shaking off any discouragement or despair. I'm shaking off anything that doesn't look and sound like you. You are leading me in triumph. That means you've given me the triumph. You don't even say you're bringing me into triumph in 2 Corinthians 2.14. You say you're leading me in triumph. I have the triumph in you, and you're leading me into it. Praise you, God. And devil, enough is enough. You will bow. There's going to be warfare in this coming season. 
but we have the victory. I know that's easy to say. I don't say that without real compassion for where your battles are. Believe me, I understand. But I am telling you, we have the victory and we have been blessed with battles. I'm not saying the battles are a blessing. I'm not saying the challenges are a blessing. I am saying we have been blessed to be handpicked by God, to be here now. And on every one of those fronts, see him, see the victory, see the truth, stand in it, decree it and declare it. If not us, who? It's time for we stop complaining about wasn't it, what isn't is, or is what isn't, sorry. And we start partnering with God to really believe your will be done, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. One of the first places I have to apply that, I'm being really real with you guys this morning, is sometimes when I go back to that place of a little discouragement, a little despair, a little frustration, I have to say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Right here, your will be done, not mine. If it's my will right now to feel despair, not my will be done, your will be done. You are the God of encouragement. Thank you, God, that right now I'm being encouraged. Oh, the devil doesn't stand a chance on any of those fronts. Now, I may have to do that a half hour later, but you know what? It's a good thing because we build our faith muscles, and I go back into, wait a minute, I'm part of a prayer revival that's breaking out. The devil doesn't stand a chance. So yes, there'll be war in 2024 and 57, 84, but you know what that means? There will be manifestations of victory. And here, let me end with this. But he didn't say there'll be war in 2024. There will be. But he said there will be spoils of war in 2024. And this is what he started sharing with me. I don't have time to unpack it fully, but let me give you an inkling of it in the next couple minutes. He started challenging me to receive from him faith beyond where I'd been. Where I have been is on many fronts, I have been contending to pursue, overtake, and recover all. And that's a good thing. It's a really good thing. But the Lord started saying to me, I didn't say there'll be recovery or there'll be payback. I said there will be spoils of war in 2024. And spoils are way more than payback. Spoils are way more than recovery. Spoils are blessings, benefits, trophies, provision that we, we, that we didn't have in the first place. They are the spoils of war. There are spoils of war coming to your life, coming to your household in 2024. Yeah, and territory. There are lands. There are houses. There are vineyards you did not plant. There are fields you did not plow. And they are coming to you as spoils of war in 2024 because you were willing to report for duty. You were willing to be part of his solution. You were willing to move in the triple vision anointing. You were willing to go to war as part of this fervent prayer revival that's breaking out. You were willing to believe his truth in the midst of difficult and heartbreaking circumstances and not go enough but say enough to those circumstances. You must bow. I love something I learned from Patricia and a wonderful woman of God who helped make our ministry what it is, Shirley Ross. They, they, I learned this from them many years ago when we were in the midst of battles and all of a sudden we'd clearly see it. And they would say, the devil's going to be sorry he ever tried. And I have taken that on as a ra rally cry and battle cry. When I see these things, when I hit that place of enough, this thing rises up in me of no, enough enough. The devil's going to be sorry he ever tried. Enough is enough, devil. You must bow. This is more than simply battling to pursue, overtake, and recover all. This is more than getting back what was lost or stolen. This is more than accelerating what has been delayed. This is even more than breakthrough where there has been blockages. Spoils are additional gains, blessings, benefits, and rewards that you did not have before you went to war. The Lord wants to ramp up our faith so we believe for spoils. This is what he challenged me. So are you willing to take your faith to another level to not only recover all that's been lost, stolen, blocked, hindered, or delayed, but are you willing to believe for spoils? And I thought, yes, I am. Spoils of war 
in 2024. This is, I'll close with this, because, you know, I always ask the Lord. I've been, I've been well taught and well mentored and well discipled and still am all the time. I'm still constantly learning from Patricia. But one of the things she taught me early on was everything must be rooted and grounded in the word. No matter how vivid, no matter how much it sounds like God, you, your, your safe place is to know it's rooted and grounded in the word. So when I have encounters, even vivid, strong God encounters, I will always ask him, especially if I'm going to share it publicly, I will always ask him for scripture. And I said, Lord, is there an example of this in scripture? And immediately, I told you, I've been reading through Daniel over and over and over again. He immediately spoke to me, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. These guys, there's, they clearly see the issue of the day, that they're, they're, everybody's supposed to bow down to this occultic statue. They refuse to do it. They stand for righteousness, but they do it in the character and nature of righteous ones. The way they speak to Nebuchadnezzar is actually with a lot of honor towards him, but while standing against it. And they say this amazing thing when he's getting mad and stoking up the fire. They say, you know, our God can deliver us from the fire. But even if he doesn't, we will not bow down. We will not kneel. We will not worship any God but him. Nebuchadnezzar loses it. And he says, stoke the fire even hotter. And what happens? They bind the three Hebrew boys. And when they open the door to throw them in, the fire is now so hot it leaps out and it destroys the guards. It destroys the enemy. See, we're going to get to a place. Part of the spoils of the war is we're going to get so up the devil's nose with our faith that he's going to be doing things that end up, I'm telling you, the word he gave me, Two and a half, three and a half years ago now, three and a half years in 2020, Hamans will be hung on their own gallows. Goliath's heads will be cut off with their own swords. And Jezebel's will be cast down by those who have been dismissed as impotent and unimportant. That is this. So they throw them into the fire. He sees they're walking around free in there. They're not even bound anymore. The ropes burn up, but they don't. And he sees the fourth man in there. They come out. We all know what happens. What happens? It's not just recompense because they were willing to go to war in the spirit, in faith, knowing who their God was and standing for his righteousness in the character and nature of the righteous one, not murmuring, complaining, cursing, and all that stuff. No, no social media posts. But when they're brought out, Nebuchadnezzar is saying, your God is the one true God. Third aspect of the triple vision anointing. But then what happens? The spoils. They're not, he doesn't just say, okay, I was wrong. Go back to where I had you before. All is good. No, they get increased favor, increased title, increased reach, increased provision, increased authority. Spoils of war. And this is what war looks like in the spirit for us in 5784. Standing for righteousness in the character and nature of the righteous one. Going to war for the people that look like they're part of the problem because we realize we war not against flesh and blood, but powers and principalities. Let me, stand to you, let me ask you to stand to your feet so I can pray for you. Father God, I thank you for what you're doing in this season. And I thank you that you are chomping at the bit to pour out to your people Give to your people. Activate your people in this season. This is some of the earliest words you've ever given me for Rosh Hashanah. And I can feel your excitement to bless your people, pour out upon your people. God, thank you that even right now you are releasing a great grace. And I ask for angels to come in to every heir of salvation in the studio, every heir of salvation watching online. And if you're not yet an heir of salvation, it's just this simple. All you have to do is say, Jesus, I want you to be my Lord and Savior. Come into my life. Come into my heart. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. I receive you as Lord, God, King, and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Ask him to anoint you and baptize you in his Holy Spirit, and you're in, and this is all for you. So, Father, thank you that even now you assign angels to every one of these heirs of salvation and that you, you use these angels to minister to these heirs, to grace these heirs, to receive each of them right now the triple vision anointing. And I declare, Lord, a grace and a faith to receive increased discernment 
to clearly see the issues of our day, what is actually behind them, to clearly see how to partner with you to bring about your solutions to those issues. I declare a ramping up, an increase of wisdom to do that. And Lord, that there'll be an increase of witness as well, that as they see, this, they see the situations, they see the solutions, and they partner with you to bring them about, God, I thank you that those around them will clearly see you, the reality of your kingdom, and will come into a saving knowledge of your son, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for the prayer revival that is being released and that they will be part of this movement of fervent and effective prayer, a revelation and realization of the power and authority we have in prayer to sort and settle things in the spirit for every situ situation that we are facing. And God, for these faithful ones here in the studio and everyone online, I thank you, Lord, that your promise for them as they report to duty, as they receive these words, they receive these gifts, they receive these anointings, as, as they partner with you to be your difference makers, your solution bringers, your heroes of holiness, your radicals of righteousness, your kingdom warriors in this coming season, I declare that spoils of war are coming to them and their houses in Jesus' name. And if you receive that by faith, simply say, Amen. That's such a good word. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise for that word. Come on. Like you mean it, tell him, Lord, where's your victory cry? Come on. Father, in the name of Jesus, the door is open. Thank you, Jesus. We'll go ahead and have a quick seat. And I uh, want to remind you, if the media team can put that graphic up one more time about the word for 5784, I want you to see that one more time. Uh, let's all just jump on there on September 13th and the 14th. Let's just do a whole church support for that too. Let's not just let the rest of the world receive that message. Let us receive that message too. Let's get excited about what, what God is doing. And uh, you know, I want to tell you something. The first, uh, we just got triple vision anointing. Come on, I'm receiving my triple vision anointing. And so you're going to hear from Patricia, you're going to hear from me, but then let's go even further. You're going to hear from Dustin, maybe we'll get Benjamin up here. We'll get, we'll just, we're just going to go over, you're going to hear from Heather and Desiree. I mean, we're just going to go for it. Let's get every door that we can that's open. Uh, really quick, I just want to encourage you, Robert, while you were preaching, I heard the door creaking open. And I felt like it was a door that was, uh, I, I felt two things. First of all, I want you to take encouragement as for us as a church, that there's been things that we have been praying for. Uh, that, that the Lord is opening the door to, right? And it seems like that for a season, you know, because creaky doors, right? It's like it's an old door. And so I felt like there's things that we had been praying for, contending for, for a season, and it felt like there was no answer, but all of a sudden the door started open. I want you to take encouragement with that. Let's pray some more, right? Because that door is going to open. But I also felt for you, Robert, that there was going to be some doors that were going to open that, that seemed uh, they, like in the same way. They were just things that you believed that God prophesied, uh, that, that there was prophetic words that came over you, even from when you first became a Christian that maybe haven't even shown up yet. But God said that he's opening those doors for you. And, uh, you know, in this day, like I, I use this example a lot because I do believe it. But, you know, in the Old Testament, we see prophets and kings together. And, and, and we, see, we see that dynamic. So there's a leader in the world, right? And then there's the leader of God, right, uh, that, God, that God establishes together. And so the kings, right, I felt like the, the, the Lord was saying the kings are going to come knocking at your door. And that God is opening doors for you to meet with leaders. Uh, that God's opening more opportunities up for you. And so that's really amazing. And so we just want to release that word over you. So would you extend your hands over Robert? And so, Father, as your prophet came in today, as your apostle came in today to open doors for us as a church, then, Father, we intercede that you would open those doors for him as well, God. And that you would give him a triple vision anointing inside of his triple vision anointing. Because you're a God uh, uh, of the double anointing, Father. And so, Father, we just thank you, Lord that there's more revelation in this and that you're going to give him more revelation inside of this in Jesus mighty name amen and so uh that feels good today right come on it was a good it was a good word uh so thank you heavenly father for all that you're doing Lord, we pray for this for, uh, you know, Patricia is also on my heart today, too, in her home, Ron, everybody, you know, her family, her sons, everybody. Father, that this massive word would also hit Patricia, Lord. Uh, listen, I'm just being a son here for a second, but, Father, I even want you to hit my mom with it. 
<laughs> it's like, you know, it's like, I know that in the natural, it looks like she's on her way out, but come on, how about some triple vision? How about some anointing? Do you got somebody, maybe you got a family member that looks like they're about ready to check into heaven. Well, if the Lord's not done with them, if they haven't completed their assignment, then we just ask that the Lord would give them more time to, to triple that visioning and complete that assignment in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, thank you, Heavenly Father. I'm just checking with the Holy Spirit. This is just so you know, this is what I'm doing. I'm just checking with the Holy Spirit. I want to make sure that we got everything that we needed to for the day. What a rich day. Can we give thank you to the Lord for that rich day? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I think we're good. Altar team, you guys got some uh, folks that can pray with us today? Come on, we always are ready. In and out of season, we're ready. Uh, but Carl and Kenda have an amazing prayer team uh, here today. That's uh, Pastors Carl and Kenda are here, and they, they have an amazing prayer team. And so I wanted, want you to be encouraged. There's some amazing testimonies that they have been able to see over, over the few months that they have been doing this. And it's so awesome to hear of them. And uh, I want you to just know that we have an amazing team here, that whatever you're facing, Whatever you're going through, we want to pray with you. Don't leave here today without getting prayed for if you need prayer. We want to know about it. Whatever issue, whether it's emotional, whether it's physical, whether it's something that you need favor in, or if you need to hear a prophetic word from the Lord, we want to pray for you. This is your church family, and we want to re respond like one. So help us. Let, us. let us serve you today by praying for you, okay? And for those of you watching online, you're like, hey, Pastor, that was a really good invitation to prayer. I would like some prayer in my life too. Then, hey, listen, you can just hit us up at prayer at shilohfellowship.com and know that we're praying for you too. And uh, later in the week, you can go. We're, we're going to post those uh, eight, the prayers for the nation that Robert, I think it's eight prayers for the nation. You had a whole graphic on it over the years uh, that we did. I think it was a couple years ago that we started it, uh, that you, you actually received this initiative from the Lord. There it is. Yeah, that's the graphic here. But we have a digital copy of this right here. And so we're going to post that on Facebook for you. We've done it before, but we'll repost it again on the Shiloh Facebook page for you to have. Uh, but like they said, you can see it on all of, uh, of the Patricia King Ministries uh, affiliates, uh, Robert Hodgkin Ministry, Michelle Burkett Ministries. So they're, they're all around. So we really love this. These are things that we partner on together as a family of ministries as well. And this is so good. This is a really good prayer thing. And then, and then like we said, I know Patricia is getting ready to relaunch Firewall USA. Come on, 2024 is a, is a year of prayer. Come on. It's a year of prayer. We are going to go after this. We are going to go before the Lord, and we're going to get our nation back in the name of Jesus, okay? All right. Well, before you go, remember this, that God loves you with an everlasting love. He really, really does. See you again next week. God bless you. Prayer team, come on up. And uh, folks, again, if you need prayer, come on up. God bless you.